guys, it's Eli, and I've got a video today on uh, one of my favorite topics, and I realized I haven't done it in a long time because I used to do too many videos about it, and that's Neon Belly. So I'm gonna do a Neon Belly, I'm gonna run through as many attacks as I can. Uh, it's gonna be kinda quick, so um, you can use that uh, fast forward and rewind button a whole lot if you wanna get to the stuff you haven't seen before, fast forward a little bit. If I went through something too fast, rewind a little bit. Uh, that's the best I can do for you. So let's start it out here. Neon Belly is, um, I like the position a whole lot because it's a transitional position. What I mean by that is it has elements of side control, elements of mount, elements of standing and ground. So it gives me a lot of good options, gi, no gi, uh, striking base, not striking base. Uh, to give you the most options possible, we're gonna take it from the gi. Now there's gonna be a lot of these that are gonna be um, usable for gi or no gi, and they should be pretty obvious and apparent, but um, just to give you the most options possible, we're gonna use the, the clothing. So um, when I get to neon belly, what I, what I like uh, to ride my neon belly, I like for this foot here to be posted in line with his shoulders roughly. Slight bend here so that I have a good kickstand, but I also have good mobility. Um, I'm gonna have a pretty upright base. My hand grips, if I, if I have the clothing, I like the grip behind the collar here like this, uh, thumb inside, and I like to grab the pants leg like, like this. Sometimes it's appropriate for me to like really just drive my knee in and just squash him like this, but it's not always appropriate. Uh, so sometimes I need a little bit more sensitivity. So starting out, the first attack I want to look for here is if I have my good grip inside the collar, I'm going to take this hand off, I'm going to slide here and chase my first hand. Whenever I chase it like this here, I'm going to loop this one around. I don't want to lean way forward here to loop it around. I'm just going to kind of pick Alex up instead and kind of like whiplash him a little bit and then get the second hand on the other side. From there, this is not a baseball bat choke, it's just a cross collar choke, thumb on one side, fingers on the other side. To finish this, I wanna slide off of him and kinda of pick him up on his side this way and bring him into the choke. My head is kinda of resting on his far shoulder and then I'm gonna squeeze here like this and get the choke on that way, all right? Now, if from here, I insert this, uh, this hand inside the collar and I feel this hand come in to kind of defend against it like that, sometimes what I can do is I can reach across to his sleeve on this side and I can pull his arm over. So I'll push a little bit and then pull his arm over and across. What I wanna do next is take my shoulder up to his ear. So I'm stuffing his arm, taking my shoulder to his ear, hugging his back, squeezing here like this to get that Bravo choke right there, which is, Similar to a darse choke, but it's a darse choke using the gi, so bravo choke, darse choke are a little bit different things. So um, once we get here, I get uh, here, maybe I wrap around or maybe I just throw a cross and he's defending both. I'm not able here to finish the choke because he's got a tight grip on me. So what I'm gonna do here with my two grips, I'm, I've got crossed arms, I'm gonna push my knuckles to the floor, use that to hop around and then pick him up. So once we get here, I pick him up, push him forward, I step one, six, two, like this to take his back. The reason I can fall off to the side is because it gives me a really good angle looking up at him here. That allows me to track his top arm like this, feed the collar, and then I have good attacks right here bow and arrow choke or sliding collar choke or single wing choke. So I have a lot of good options whenever I take the back this way. That's a whole nother video looking at how to finish things from the back. One more time on that one because I realize sometimes whenever I show this one, I show it too broken up and people don't see like the fast motion of it. So it has to be kind of quick. Once we get here, I go this way, sit and take the back like that and then start to look for my attacks from the back here. In a similar family as these cross chokes here like this, if I start with my hands uncrossed, then um, what I can look to do from here, it's a little bit more telegraphed if I go here and cross around his neck, he feels the strangle setting on. So a good choke for that reason is the baseball bat choke. The baseball bat choke is really deceptive because I'm going parallel hands and he doesn't feel the immediate threat. So what's happening, if I start with the grips that I mentioned before, uh, thumb inside the collar, hand here on the hip, I keep this one where it is on this side of his neck, this hand is gonna go palm up, slide back here on the opposite side. So I have parallel hands like I'm swinging a baseball bat. Whenever I wanna finish this though, I have to turn my body to cross my arms rather than just crossing my arms from this orientation like this. So from there, I'm gonna cut this knee over across his arm so it takes out one, uh, one side of his ability to defend. And then I'm gonna turn 180 degrees this way keep my head down this way, low to his abdomen, and then I'm gonna finish by squeezing in here. It's a very tight choke, very deceptive because it starts with a, a kind of unassuming, uncrossed arms. The pivot of the body, the pivot of me around his body, crosses the arms up and finishes the choke like that. So that's the baseball, that choke. Now let's talk about some ways that I might be able to attack his arms. A lot of these will be a little bit more nogi applicable because I don't need the cloth to be able to choke him from here. So um, some of the ways that I can look to attack his arms, 
One is, what if this arm here is giving me some kind of grief? Maybe he's pushing here, maybe he's pushing on me, something like that. He's presenting me with this arm. So whatever is the case, I wanna to look to scoop his arm up. Now, so what I'm gonna do, if it's no gi, obviously I can grab here, C-clamp behind the tricep tendon or, or the elbow here like this and scoop up. And when I do that, I'm gonna pick up wide, clamp his wrist into my armpit here like this so that I have a control on his elbow, control on his wrist. I'm gonna slide my knee forward here this way and I have to be careful in practicing this one because this leg here is gonna to start to step over his head and then I wanna sit down this way. This hand I'm reaching across so that I don't flop on my back and I keep control and I'm gonna squeeze my knees together and it's gonna be a very tight arm lock this way here. So that one again, I scoop up by the elbow, get his wrist uh, gathered up here. So I'm taking a lot of the range of motion and articulation out of his arm. And then I'm gonna scoop my knee high up into his armpit. It's possible even from here, I could go belly down on this side, try to take my knee over. And you see he's already kind of tapping there because it's a lot of tight pressure. Or you can sit back on it here this way. I hold on this side, squeeze my knees together and get the tap that way. Sometimes um, a lot of these attacks on the arms, a lot of these attacks in general are gonna depend on what he's doing in response to my knee on belly. So the way he's trying to escape or at least relieve the pressure of the knee on belly. So sometimes Alex will try to scoop um, this foot here like this and push my knee in an effort to like get me to fall off of him this way. So if I see this arm coming in here, whenever he's doing that, trying to scoop, that's a really good gift for me because I'm gonna reach between my legs, grab his sleeve here like this and then from there, I can pick all the way up and step this way. So my leg kind of flips through here like this. I wanna scoop this one up underneath his neck here this way. And then I'm gonna to look to step over and across. My knees go the same direction. I cross over this way. I can get the triangle from here possibly. If I'm not getting the triangle, I can get the belly down arm bar this way. It's still a really tight arm bar there. For that same kind of attack, sometimes if he gets deep that way, uh, even a simpler one, especially if he's successful in pushing my knee off, he actually kind of gives me this attack here, which is setting up a bicep slicer. So what's happening like this, my shin is going across his bicep right here. I'm just gonna pick up enough to be able to get my figure four like this. So now his wrist is in front of my pelvis and then I'm gonna reach across. I like to underhook so he can't bring that other arm in. His other shoulder can't turn into me too well. And then I'm gonna press my hips down. It's gonna be a very tight, very sharp shin digging into the bicep. I can actually like break the humerus sometimes. If he wants to bring the other arm into play to try to resist somehow, sometimes he goes directly to the source of the pressure, which is pushing on this knee, trying to relieve some of that pressure off of him. Whenever he does that, I, sometimes the, uh, the sight picture that I get, I see this kind of frame. I see an opening, a pocket right there, a space. So I wanna scoop inside. I wanna cup his tricep tendon like this. My elbow goes into his ribs and I wanna pick him up on his side. This hand's gonna go to this side of his head here like this. I wanna pick up, step around. I wanna grab if the pant is available like this. Now you can do the same thing, no gi. This didn't require the gi at all, um, but since I need a different grip, I'll grab the inside of the leg if there's no gi available. But if there is gi, this is better. Then I'm gonna pinch the knees together like this here. I like to keep cupping here. Once I grab that, that uh, tricep tendon or that uh, elbow here, then I don't wanna let go through the entire thing. So if I go back to finish right now, I let go of this, I grab the wrist here like this, unfold. And again, I keep my hand here on the elbow the whole time, squeeze the knees together, pull down, get the arm lock. So from here, if the guy's playing hyper defensively, I can do something similar to what I did a while ago, which is um, whenever I pick the arm up to step across. But right here, it's harder to pick his arms up because he's playing in really tight this way. That's why I like this attack here, where I'm gonna post here and I'm gonna kick this leg here like this. So I step into this S mount kind of position. When I step into this S mount kind of position, different things can happen because right now I have both of his arms and his head in between my two legs here like this. So if I'm able to pick his arm up this way, I can slide into position to be able to get the straight arm lock from the S mount. If he gives me instead, this arm comes inside like this here, like he's trying to push, then something that I might be able to do too from here so that I don't lose my balance and fall over. Obviously I can't do the straight arm bar on this side, but if I can tuck this one here underneath this way, I have his arm in the crease of my hip like this, then I can start to pull this leg over and across this direction so that maybe we wind up on this side here and I'm in omoplata position like this. It's really good because he's already flat so I don't have to go through a lot of the trouble of flattening him out and getting to his stomach. 
I want to finish from here, I can put the two hands down, rise up, push the knee to the floor, and get omoplata back. If I don't feel as if um, from there I'm going to be able to pull him over this way to get omoplata, then what I can do from there is drop on this side here, this way, and then that's going to pick him up instead to take him in the direction of omoplata. Now I'm going to pedal away as I would before. I want to reach, try to pull him nice and flat, scoop up, sit here, and go for the omoplata on that side. And again, whenever I go for omoplata, if I can get his hand on the floor over here like this, I want to try to capture that arm if I can because it doubles my options rather than just putting all my eggs in the basket of finishing the omoplata right here. I could also come back and try to get this chicken wing style arm bar that way. So sometimes with this, uh, this drop into this S mount kind of position here like this, he doesn't keep both arms tucked inside. Instead, he sees what's gonna happen and he's gonna block me with that arm right here. So as I start to kick over, he actually blocks and he pushes this leg off in an attempt to shove me back here and then he's gonna work his escape from there. So um, if I'm ready for that though, I can use that kind of as an opportunity. So what I look to do here is I'm gonna kick this to the other side of his head here as he goes to push off, I'm gonna take Alex's arm and I wanna pull and accelerate that same kind of motion that he was using to pull that off. Now, a couple different things can happen from here. Um, two of my favorites that I like a whole lot is one, and once I get this pulled across, this other arm can sweep through and reinforce this grip on the bottom. And then I'm gonna drop my ribs, scissor out my legs like a scarf hold position here and go to this old school kind of walkie katami straight arm lock like this. And then uh, from there, I'm dropping the weight on my ribs here like this, pulling up on his wrist and it's a nice strong arm lock this way. This grip is perfectly fine. If I can switch over to double palms up, this is cool too. <clears throat> Another thing that we can look to build off of that, if he does the same thing and he pushes that arm up, he pushes my leg rather off of him like this and exposes his arm on this side, this back arm now can sweep through, shoot up underneath this direction. I'm gonna stuff his head inside like this. So I have his head and his arm bunched up together. And then once I have his head and his arm bunched up together like this, I drop my hand down to the floor. I grab my forearm here and I'm gonna ratchet like this until I can get this here, squeeze for that Darce choke like we mentioned before. So that should illustrate the difference between the Darce choke and the Bravo choke like we mentioned in the earlier part. From knee on belly, we don't just have upper body attacks as well. Um, we've got chokes, obviously, we've got uh, the omoplata, we've got straight arm bar, we've got all kinds of things for the upper body, but what about the lower body? That's a little more deceptive sometimes, especially if he's using his lower body to try to reposition, get on his side, escape, whatever. Uh, one of the really deceptive ones here is if I post up on the upper body, get him thinking about up here, I step back all the way across. So similar to that S mount drop that I did before, I back step here this way. I'm gonna pinch up his legs this direction. I wanna get here and I can go inside for the saddle position like this. Once I get to the saddle, we have all of our saddle attacks from here. So for in the saddle, of course, we have straight foot lock from here, where I can go straight for the Achilles tendon. I can shoot underneath and get this reverse grip, which makes a lot more torque and I can really attack the foot and the Achilles. From there, I can slide through, get the clover leaf here like this. This is very painful, I'm pulling my my thumb to my shoulder, I'm squeezing my knees in with my crossed ankles and I'm extending my hips up this way. Really painful uh, submission there. If I lose this leg here, then of course I still have the heel hook. On the heel hook for this one, again, keeping my legs here, my ankles crossed. Uh, a way that I really am fond of finishing this one is to reach up with my arm, grab the heel, put the toes manually into my armpit, scoop back so I get the flat of his foot pinched from my tricep to my lat, hold here with this butterfly grip, and then I'm gonna push his toes toward his butt, squeeze my knees and lift my hips almost like an arm bar. That's a lot of torque laterally on the knee, so it's really dangerous submission. Another deceptive way to enter into uh, leg attacks from knee on belly position is to actually kind of drop back and give him kind of a weird half bar. So if from here, I can step back between his two legs and pick up just this leg here on this side. Then from here, I can come through. I've got a nice, good, tight uh, reap on the knee here this way. Again, I can get butterfly grip or just go straight to the heel hook on this side. And it's really nasty. It's a lot of torque right here. It's like a backside 50-50 and a good heel hook right there from knee on belly. Another great leg attack that doesn't necessarily involve the saddle, but we can go directly to a knee bar from here sometimes. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna step all the way across, similar to how we were doing a straight arm lock before. And so what I'm gonna look to do from here, take this foot uh, all the way across underneath his butt on this side. 
So I gotta figure out where my hands need to go. So I place my hands here, one here, scoop up on the leg. As I shoot through this way, I wanna pick this foot off, off the floor. So I've got this foot coming inside, so it's a nice squeeze on his leg. As I go to finish the, the knee bar, I wanna pull this nice and straight. I'd like to get his foot here, pinch between my ear and my shoulder on the bottom side here like this. I'm gonna hold the heel. I'm gonna get that butterfly grip similar to the heel hook we did a while ago. And a few different mechanics are happening here. I'm pushing my head toward the floor. I'm extending my hips and I'm squeezing my knees all at the same time. And that's a lot of good direct pressure into his knee, but there's also some rotation that makes it even tighter on that hinge joint right there. Uh, all right guys, so I hope that you like this. It's an updated version of the Neon Belly Attacks kind of video. It's got a lot more options in it. I went pretty fast on it, so if you have any questions about the details, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments. And uh, make sure you let me know some feedback on it. And if I miss something too, let me know about it because I know there's, there's tons of options from Neon Belly and uh, it's a really get, great place to hunt some missions and it's a really good transitional position like we mentioned before. I appreciate you guys watching and make sure you keep watching Night Jiu Jitsu, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.